Brett Perigo, tonight's second place finisher. Plenty of fans here, Brett, and a solid second place finish. Yeah, I got to shout out the uh, Turn 2 Terror Boards over there. Uh, they're all a bunch of good guys to hang out with, talk to. I, I really like them. doing the night man hey i'm talking here <laughs> you know who you're talking to <laughs> my <Yeah>. domain <laughs> on my way to money night Raw. The second one. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice. It's a oh. trap. I, I feel like it is. I feel like he's, he's setting up fights in the front stretch. Is what he's trying to do. <laughs> Devin Board with us at Keen Motorsports Shop here with Kyle Keen. Sitting here with Sean Keen. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the racing history. Yep. What's going on? Turn two terribles here. It is Monday, March 27th, 2023. Uh, Jimmy Barr here with Chris Lynn, Jeremy Zarfoss. Uh, we are going to talk tonight to Derek Locke, who won at BAPS Motor Speedway, the 358 season opener, uh, here probably momentarily. Um, we're also going to talk about um, more weather, unfortunately, and uh, some of the outlaw stuff and, and a, a decent race at Lincoln. So, um, guys, how you doing? A little sunburnt. Yeah, got a little sun yesterday. It was a little breezy, a lot of sun at BAPS. It was nice to see the sun shining for once around here. So uh, it's hard to complain about it, but, you know, um, great weekend. Got to see two races. Yeah, yesterday was – I think we're all talking about we're like either sun yeah. or wind burnt. <laughs> it was yeah. nice, though. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Yeah, everything was great. Yeah, it was great. It was nice to get the sun and uh, finally some warmer weather and uh, – Hopefully the weather holds out for it, I was I kept I keep saying this to Chris every time I see him every weekend now. I've been to Lincoln twice this year and BAPS once now before I've been to Williams Grove. My goodness which is it. just unheard of because usually like especially BAPS is like an end of the year trip for me. And then Lincoln, you know, maybe I go twice or two or three times a year just because those are the tracks furthest away for me. And the fact that I've been there before Williams Grove is just well, I think the it's good cool, news but it's... for us, Williams Grove fan clubbers, Jimmy yeah. is not coming Friday, no matter what. So it should not rain. <laughs> Changing the mood around here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that, going. Is that how this works? It's Jimmy's fault? It's yeah, Jimmy's, it's, the, it's Jimmy's the problem. Fault. It's my fault. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, I it, it was great to see two races. I mean, both... It was definitely a tale of two days uh, when it comes to the races, you know, and uh, we're waiting for Derek to get here, by the way. Yeah. He's uh, he's getting here. He was working on a race car, uh, finishing up, so he is on his way. But, um, you know, I know we're going to get into it a little bit, some with him, but definitely a tale of two days, you know, when you barely make it Saturday because of rain. And then mm -hmm. Sunday, it's like we hadn't had rain in three years. So, 
Well, um, I guess what I guess while we're talking waiting for Derek, let's talk about Lincoln on Saturday. Port Royal rains out. Uh, Bridgeport, I think, cancels on on Saturday, and even BAPS canceled their normal race on Saturday. Lincoln fought and got it in, and uh, I appreciate that. But uh, I guess the feature was pretty uh, well, was pretty rough. Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, least. you were there, so give us your thoughts. I mean, we weren't. I followed it on Twitter. Um, Jeremy, I think you watched. I wasn't there. watching. Uh, I, 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 flicked, right. Jimmy, you were I checked in and out once or twice, but yeah, I mean, it was definitely challenging. You know, the heats went okay. Um, it was narrow. It was fast. It, it, it was fairly smooth. Um, but you know, everybody was tight. You know, Danny biked it, rolled over. Um, Riley biked it, rolled over, and he was loose and he still biked. So it was definitely a challenge for those guys. And in the feature. They just couldn't get going. The track was narrow, fast and narrow. Uh, you know, uh, there was contact like um, Aaron Bollinger, you know, his car's junk, big junk. And it was that his accident was due to contact from a previous incident that happened around him. It wasn't even due to that. So, like, that particular red flag wasn't – it was a product of the track, but it wasn't because somebody did something stupid, you know, right. uh, in that particular instance. But once they got going – you know, it got strung out a little bit. They got the lap traffic. Um, you know, it seemed to, to be a little bit better. It never got super wide, uh, but it was fast all night. I mean, it was just yeah. fast, fast, fast all night. A lot of tear offs. It was. It had tons of moisture, and it. it started drizzling again and misting during the feature while we we're under one of the many red flags and or fuel stop. Did they do an open? There's a there's a fuel stop before they even got a lap in. Yeah, they, oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Because it was five red five. Five, five reds on five starts, yeah. Yeah. So um, it started misting during that. It was kind of like they're they're kind of it felt like they were, you know, like did they know? You know, I don't know how much moisture the track could have held if it did start to rain. I didn't right. look at the radar, but it, it was like it was pretty frustrating a little bit. But you know, once they got going, they got a feature in, and and then the legends honestly like I got stuck in the infield for legend race. They had their you know their their spin outs and this and that, and they had a red flag too. Um, but they were fast, man. Those guys were ripping in those little cars. Like a couple of them I saw on Facebook commented, you know, that just how fast it was for them. That's got to feel like Daytona for a legend car in that place. I mean, and they were, they were getting it. So, um, it, I mean, it was okay. You know, I think there's been a lot of, man, I don't want to get into it. I don't think, cause I'm just going to get mad, but we are a fickle bunch here in central PA. Oh, yeah. It's, it's actually frustrating and pretty pathetic that yeah. anyone would complain about the track deciding the race. Like, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's a misguided. I understand what they're saying, the frustration of, man, this is dumb. They're tearing up all these cars. They don't really want to see torn up cars as fans. But the anger is misguided. It's, in the, it's, it's being aimed in the wrong direction. It's, it's some, of the drivers, some of the drivers <laughs> yeah. said it right. You know, they, right, they right. were like um, – I think Danny hit it right on um, Dalton first was like frustration. Next morning was like, yes, frustrated, but I still chose to be out there. Mm-hmm. Right. They all Shout chose to go out there. Nobody was forced to or said the same thing. Yeah. They, I mean, like, it, was race, it was race three or four of the year. Nobody was, nobody season is over if they decided to not race. Right. Nobody was going to lose a sponsorship because of that race. In fact, it could have been a safety issue if they thought that and said, if it's, you know what I mean? So like, the anger from the fans is is misguided. It's it's probably boiling over from all the other shit going on around here. But we are definitely a fickle bunch, and we are a spoiled bunch with how much we do race. And then these tracks get made out to be the bad guy, whether they whatever the decision don't race, right? I think so. Interesting thing, and to go into a little bit of that, and I think here's the the weird part with the fickle bunch in central PA is you have three tracks that are major players in sprint car racing, approaching the same situation from three different directions. You have Williams Grove on Friday. Did they make the right call on Friday? Yes, I think yeah, they, they did. did. We had a stupid but that's all opinion. Yeah. But what I'm saying is looking <laughs> on the simple, let's keep I it think- simple here. Keep yeah. it on the simple level of what your eyes can see. Let's keep it, I guess there. Yeah. Um, Thursday night, we had a stupid red cell come over my house. It knocked my power out. It The grounds were absolutely saturated. And they have their pit thing. Mm-hmm. And there was steady rain for the most part Friday. Yeah. You go back 
to an outlaw yeah. show, and I said what I said about that. But this was different than that. Um, it, it was. It was. I, I don't fault them a bit for canceling. They canceled early enough. We whatever. I think we knew all week too that it was gonna they, right. like it was gonna be they hard waited, to get that race. They in. waited as long as we they were, could within yeah. reason. We kind of we kind of figured it would have canceled Wednesday or Thursday, but they um, waited. Port Royal makes an announcement Friday. We'll let you know at 9 a.m. what we're going to mm-hmm. do. And that's, I think, fair. You at least yep. wait till race day. See what that what's going to happen. Before, before Don't just cancel and all out. of a sudden, hey, all the cars, all yep. the sun's out, and now we look dumb. Yep. Kind of changed a little bit of that. But Port Royal also was getting rain all day. You, know, so you look at the radar. They were getting hit. Lincoln was not. So to put it in perspective, Lincoln on the south side of the state – was kind of getting some mist and not not what Port Royal was getting, so I understand that. But Port say, "Hey, we're done. That's fine." Mm-hmm. Now you look at Lincoln. Should they race? Should they race? I get it's up to them. Um, I think, from my fan side, if a track can race, they should at least give everyone opportunity that wants to race to be there. That's what Lincoln Absolutely. did. Um, it was not raining. Had they have called it, they're gonna get lit up for calling a race when it's not raining at in Hanover or whatever Abbottstown. So they got the track ready. The track was well enough to race on. The teams are saying, hey, it was well enough to race on. That's now your choice to go to do that. Yep. Um, was it going to be stupid heavy? Yes, we knew that. You could see it was going to be stupid heavy. Everywhere around you is raining and puddles. So, of course, the track's going to be stupid heavy. But they gave you a raceable surface that was different. It's, it's interesting to watch how those three tracks navigate this. It, yeah, Lincoln's it was. one way. I think Winch goes the other way. Yeah. Ports, <laughs> maybe the most reasonable would be my thing. Like, But they had the mountains, and it's hard to say what the hell happens there. They port, we'll push it too. But at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> it, it's, and I think that adds to the frustration. Like, if you're a Williams Grove, if you're a Williams Grove guy or whatever, and you see Lincoln makes it work, and you're like, why didn't you Grove try this? Well, then Lincoln makes it work, and that happens. And now you're like, well, now you see why the Grove didn't try this. But those groups are getting, you know, it's it's a weird dynamic. Like, you have to look at it fairly. I think the drivers, props to them, yep. not only with Lincoln, but with Baps, they gave them both fair shakes, and I think yep. that should be applauded. Yep. No, I think we were pretty lucky to have two races this weekend on a pretty uh, – granted, sa- Sunday was great, but for the amount of rain that we got all week, Baps could have just packed it in too. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, they did. I, they, they did. <laughs> right. They did. They did, in fact, pack you tried it in, that, you? <laughs> in the best of ways. They packed it in BC Racing. And they they kind of got – as it I, – I, they got the yep. wrong end of it, right? Yeah. And that didn't happen. Like, and we're – we're going to talk about that. We do have Derek Locke here, so let's bring him on in to talk more about yesterday. Uh, winner of the 358 uh, division race yesterday at BAPS, Derek Locke. Thank you so much for joining us. There we go. Yeah. Hey. Can you hear me now? On, yeah, yeah, we, we got, got you. you. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Congratulations on your win yesterday, man. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. So we were uh, we were just chatting here while you were coming on. We talked about uh, Lincoln and, and their situation Saturday night, and <clears throat> we were just getting a transition into Sunday a little bit. Um, and you're the perfect person to kind of talk about this. I, I read an article here, I don't know, just two hours ago from Jeremy Elliott. I uh, talked to Justin Peck a little bit, or sorry, talked to Justin Peck about his plans for this year, but he also talked to Colton Gauss after the the, the event. Um, which we'll get into here in a minute. I want to make sure I don't forget that. That's why I'm talking about it. So, um, but let me back up. I won't, I'm not going to keep you here long, but I want to get a little bit of your background for some folks who don't know you. They just know you from victory lane. Cause that's where they see you the most, but he wins tell, a lot, us a little man. Bit, tell us a little bit about your history and your family's history in racing. Cause I think it goes back pretty far and it might even go back further than I know. Tell us a little yeah, bit about your history. I mean, it goes back to the sixties. So I half ran, half ran back in the sixties. I mean, there's some pictures around here everywhere of him racing and That's awesome. dad racing and everybody racing. So, uh, yeah, he started, he ran super sportsman, but he ran, I guess you consider four 10 sprint cars back then. There really wasn't different divisions. You kind of just ran what you run, what you run kind of deal. So, but he started the family hobby obsession. So, uh, 
It's all his fault. <laughs> Got it. So uh, when did you start racing? At what age did you get into it? I started running go-karts probably 1996, 1997. I actually ran road courses and uh, pavement stuff first. Oh, wow. And then uh, switched to uh, dirt because around Pennsylvania, that's pretty much all there was. So we ran uh, Shippensburg and Path Valley. Okay. And then how long did it take you to get into a full-size sprint car? Uh, 2006 was my first year. So I didn't start till I was 22 years old. So I started a little later, but, uh, okay. yeah, dad got out of it. His, his last year was 2005. So then I kind of took over the family business hobby deal after that. And was your first, uh, venture into full size was super sportsman or were you? No, uh, the, my dad ran super sportsman until 2004. Okay. And then we kind of saw the writing on the wall with a uh, silver Springs. So he got a 358 car from, he bought a couple cars from uh, Raymer from the Harz team and then uh, started running Lincoln and the Grove. And uh, then in 2006, I ran Trailways full time. Okay. Got it. And you've kind of been in 358 since until recently? Yeah. Well, I ran 358 my first year and then I started driving for UPS. So I couldn't really race as much. You know, work was kind of more important. I couldn't, you yeah. know, if you don't work, you can't afford to race. Right. So I did that. I ran uh, for a super sportsman owner for a year or two and ran the Saturday night deal because I could race on Saturdays. I couldn't race Fridays because I worked late and uh, ran for him for about a year and a half and then went back to the 358. We started running Sealands Grove because they ran Saturday nights Okay. and did that for a few years. We did it off and on. I mean, I was working a lot, getting married doing other stuff. So there's years we only ran 10, 10, 11 times a year. But uh, once uh, I got more seniority at work with UPS and I could race a little bit more. So basically starting 2016, 2017, we started running with URC, started running the 360 deal and racing a lot more. Got it. And I, I kind of 360s was kind of like kind of my recent knowledge of you and you kind of dabble now into kind of home, as we say, in a 358. So you still do 360 stuff. What kind of made that change between kind of URC to the 358s here? Well, I mean, it's more by uh, necessity because when we ran 360s, Seals Grove was our home track. So when they went 358 to 360, I mean, we had to kind of change if we wanted to run Saturdays. And at that point in time, I still really couldn't get off work to run Fridays. So we switched to the 360 deal. And uh, then uh, they switched, well, they, they quit racing full time. So I kind of needed somewhere to go to race, basically. Right. I mean, that's. You know, back when I started running the 360, you could run 50, 60 times a year with URC and with uh, Sealands Grove. You could go to New York and run. We still do that, but uh, you could race a lot, and we need to race to, you know, stay sharp. So we bought a 358 off of uh, Gary Ritter, who still sponsors the race car, and uh, through our connection with Phil Walter and stuff, and uh, kind of got our act together with that. And when they went to the big win wings and made it an easy decision for us because yeah. we didn't want to run the three by fives on Friday, then switch wings and run. It's a different setup. It's a different deal. And it just made it easy for us. And uh, it was the right way to go to race more. So with the 358, I, I you know, I don't not, obviously don't want to give away your secrets here, but <laughs> you really found something the last few years. Um, what do you think in your mind? I mean, it's obviously it's got to be a lot of things, right? But what really has been the catalyst for the success you've had here the last few years at at a consistent level, like multiple races a year, swept Williams Grove two years, three years ago. I think it was twenty one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, two years ago. Like, kind of what happened that all that came together? Timing. What uh, what do you kind of point toward there? A little bit of everything. A lot of luck. I mean, it takes a lot of luck to win these races. I mean, like last night we drew a good number. I mean, we were really good in the heat race and kind of earned the redraw, but still you got to get lucky. And, you know, we had a really good car. We kind of babied it most of the race. We were probably a little faster than what we showed. But, uh, yeah, a lot of luck. And, like, 2019, Drydeen came aboard, and we got some new sponsors and stuff, and we were able to race a lot more. And, like I said, work my work schedule, I mean, I'm a driver at UPS. So gaining seniority, get a little bit better route. I had two kids in between, and they were both, they're not old. They're seven and four, but we got kind of past the baby toddler stage. So I get right. a, we might sleep every once in a while. So yeah. that, <laughs> having the right crew and having crew guys that have been with me for 10, 11, 12 years now, 
getting chemistry and just driving better, just driving more aggressive. And, you know, when we started, we had one car and one motor. So I really pay your own bills. It's not fun to tear right, stuff right. up. So yeah, got a little more equipment and just got a lot more experience racing. So this year you talked about, um, even last night in victory lane, you talked about dabbling in the 410 a little bit. Um, how did that all come together? Uh, you know, th- as far as equipment wise and kind of like, how do you sit down and say, okay, we, we have the funds to be able to get the equipment. How do you plan out the future for that and how often you run it or where you run it or how you test it? Like, how do you fit that in with all this other stuff going on? Well, basically we have a 358, 360 schedule. I think we have about 20 races. It's the 358, 360 races. So we'll hit every 358 race at the Grove. We'll hit the 358 races at BAPS. Uh, we'll run URC at Port Royal and Sealands Grove. And then we'll go to Outlaw Speedway in New York where we run at up there at ESS and stuff. So those are the races we're definitely running with the 360, 358. And then the 410 stuff, uh, Dad actually just got back tonight with some parts and body panels and stuff for the 410 car. So it should be probably this weekend. We'll probably get it done. I'll let her at this week sometime. But uh, we're off this weekend, so it actually gives us time to get the 410 car together and ready to go. But the month of April, I mean, we run the Grove, the 7th. The 15th, we go to New York, and then the next week, we run Seals Grove, and then the next week, we run the Grove with URC. So, we have busy. a lot of 360 races coming up, so we're not getting the 410 out probably until the beginning of May, but it'll be, I mean, if we run the Grove on a Friday night and it rains out, we'll go to Port on Saturday. I mean, that's kind of what our schedule is. I think we ran four times last year, so I have about 11 more shows I can run on the motor before it needs rebuilt. So, that's pretty much the plan, try to run at 10, 11 races this year. So, um I want to throw a recommendation out there that your car would look great if it was base white with everything else around it. I'm a white car fan. Just saying, white would be great. Uh, don't have votes here. White. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> so let me let me ask you this. I, you know, our 358 guys, right? We got a few choices around here. Friday nights, Williams Grove. Saturday night, you got you got Lincoln for the most part. You're gonna have some Seals Grove, some Baps, some other places. Lincoln, not your style. Just something you never. Like, you seem to be a big track guy. Is that just fit your style, or are you just like, hey, I don't want to tear my shit up if I don't have to? Uh, that's some of it at Lincoln. You don't want to tear your stuff up. I mean, Lincoln – I mean, the Williams Grove pays a better purse than Lincoln does. So, I mean, and the 360 deal pays a better purse than the 358 does. So, we, we okay. try to support the tracks that pay good. I mean, that's the main deal. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's – we're trying to go to the places that treat us well and pay good. And Lincoln has some better paying races, but – a lot of the times they're on the same nights we're running the 360 or on a Saturday night somewhere or we're going somewhere like we go up to New York and run with ESS and with the Patriots and, you know, they pay three grand to win, 3,500 to win, four or five grand to win races. Right. And they pay good back through and they treat us good and you don't kill tires up there. So it makes it a lot easier to go up there. And we've been doing it for several years now. So, you know, they, and there's small tracks up there, actually. I mean, I started at Trailways in Lincoln. So, I mean, trust me, I, I, mean, I like tracks the size of susky like outlaw i don't know if you've ever been up there but it's you know probably half the size of susky bank yeah. no walls i mean it's a fun track to race on we like going up there and it teaches you you know it teaches you how to drive differently a little bit how how that that ess series seems to be pretty competitive there's been a lot of guys that come out and run other things around the country and or 410s from that 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 class and that uh, division, when you go up there, how do you rank up that competition versus kind of what we got going here with 358s? I mean, the 360 guys up there, I mean, that's their 410 racing up there. <clears throat> they have a 305 division up there. I guess uh, CR, CRSA or something. I don't know. But, I mean, they already have a 305 deal up there. And the 360 guys up there, I mean, they they run well. I mean, when the outlaws come up and race with them, I know. I think Paulie finished second last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of years ago, and you know he's really good. Frantic's really good. He goes down to Florida and wins a lot of races down there. So, I mean, it's good. I like racing with those guys up there. And like I said, I mean, they treat you good, and they're you know they're fun to race with. And you got a wild Mark Smith show up every now and then just to take him, take everybody's money and run, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Lucas Lucas comes up there. Ryan Smith runs yeah. up there. You know, they got a couple four ten guys that come up there. Like I said, they pay basically a four ten purse, and then you're not hurting tires and. Yeah, you don't, need, you don't need a killer motor up there. I mean, the race we won up there at the end of the year last year, we blew a head gasket, I think, in the heat race, and we're able to salvage it, you know. Whereas down here on a big track and stuff, you know, that probably hurts you, but up there it probably helped you a little bit. Um, so I want to get into BAPS real quick, and I'll let Jimmy and Chris have some questions here, but um, I want to get into BAPS yesterday a little bit. 
And obviously, you know, it's been well documented here in the last 24 hours, kind of what happened. Um, you know, Jeremy Ellis article said he kind of that the track reached out to sort of all the drivers. Now, it may not have been 358 division, but talked about lowering the laps. And everybody said, no, we should be good. We should be good. We should be good. Nobody knows or has a crystal ball what's going to happen. I mean, were, were the 358 guys included in that conversation at all? No, but I mean, I think our feature is only 20 laps. 20 so anyway. I, yeah, I think that, yeah, that should have been fine anyway. So. I mean, I was rooting for a 10 lap feature because I didn't think anybody would make a 20 after what I just saw with the 410s, <laughs> you know, uh, even though it's a little less power, but still. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but even with a little less power, I mean, you could you could blow the tires off of them if you wanted to, even with the 358. Oh, we, it happened. There was more than a few. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I'd go out and, you know, make a couple good laps after the restart. And then, I mean, honestly, I was just trying to save my tires then. Yeah. I mean, if I heard somebody coming or when I got to lap traffic, I was going to start being aggressive again, but you know, I didn't want to go out there and run like an idiot and blow my tire with a lap to go and really feel stupid. So, well, you know. yeah. And you don't know, right. You're kind of like, you can't see over your right shoulder and see what that tire is doing. Are you able to feel that loss of grip when there's rubber though? I mean, can you feel that? I mean, I guess at a certain point when it's all the way at the end of its life, you feel it gets soft or, you know, if you miss the rubber, it gets super slick. But can you tell that you're losing tire throughout the throughout the run? I mean, you can tell when it's cording because it starts to it starts to vibrate. OK, so you can tell even my tire. But I think like five or six laps ago, I ran it hard down the straightaway or coming off the corner the one time. And it, it didn't it didn't vibrate like I knew it was coming apart. But it was like, OK, I need to calm down a little bit here you know be a little bit nicer to it but yeah i mean you can they start to vibrate you you can feel them get soft but you're so hooked up you're already rolled up so hard that you really you can't tell until it's until it starts vibrating uh, and it comes apart and it's not good yeah and I, you know it's funny like watching your car on entry the whole race i mean being in the lead definitely helps you have clean air you're not having to you know, make a lot of moves around guys, but you know, there were definitely guys like tossing in the corner slide and trying to get to the bottom or they missed it where you could just kind of like drive it straight, just a Sunday drive for the most part. That's got to save tire. I mean, and you're not overdriving the car. You're not spinning the rear tires. Uh, it's got to be a huge benefit. I, I would assume being out front that way for another, yet another reason to be out front. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> clean air when it's wet and heavy. I mean, any time to be out front is a good time, but uh, yeah. I mean, anytime you pitch the car in when it's like that, you're just scrubbing your right rear. You don't want to do that. So just driving it straight. The the one disadvantage is like if you're under caution or something, if you're running fourth, fifth, you can kind of look at other people's tires. Yeah. When you're out front, you can't look at anybody's tires. So I was every time there's a caution, I was like, you know, trying to look at the tar cars that were stopped and like, hey, you know, what's your tire look like? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, looking for that and, you know, looking for people popping tires and stuff because I mean, and most people put on pretty nice tires to run because you know you kind of have to when it's like that. So, you know, when people start popping tires, you kind of get nervous a little bit. For sure. Jimmy, Chris, what do you got? I, I would say for me, so Derek, you, you mentioned 2021. That was the year you went, you won everything at Winners Grove. It was, right, 2021? Yeah, 2021. Every feature. Um, I was there for, I think, 98% of those races. If I missed one, I don't know which one. But it was it was crazy to me. And the one thing I, Jimmy and I were talking about before was you took a back row or, or you gave up the pole position in one of those nights to start 12th and you got rained out. Yeah. That was, and then you won that the was makeup bad. feature. That was crazy. What is your what made you want to go do that challenge, first of all? And and what are your thoughts when it rains out? Because like, obviously Winners Grove on a fresh track starting 12th is probably not yeah. ideal. No, that was a crazy night. So yeah, no, it wasn't ideal, but they wanted me to do it. And, you know, I, you know, the track wanted to do it and, you know, the fans wanted to do it and they got a sponsor to do it. So it's like, well, you know, they wanted me to start last first. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You <laughs> That's know, crazy. You can, yeah. You, you know, the first lap of the feature, you know, somebody could screw up and, you know, I could tear up a car and that's not worth it for us, obviously. Right. But uh, yeah, the 12th place, I mean, I grew up at Silver Springs. My dad started 16th every week for a regular show back in the day or the high point man, whoever that would have been. So, you know, I, they, uh, Justin Lowe called me and convinced me to do it. So, you know, it worked out as a good race. So that was one of the coolest things. Like, I remember hearing it that night and then the 410 feature ends and it rains as you guys are getting staged in the back stretch. Like, Oh, that's like worst case scenario for you. Cause now you're getting canceled coming back a week or two later 
Raiders are hot laps, having to start 12th, and you still won, which is crazy. But um, yeah, what's I mean, that got, season like for you, though? Yeah, lucky, though, so. <laughs> what? That season as a whole, how was that for you? Like, Did you feel pressure down the stretch to finish winning all those features? Or were you like, hey, I'm, I'm doing my thing, and I'm just going to keep <laughs> winning? Because I think everybody around me felt a lot of pressure. So, <laughs> I mean, I did, I did a little bit, yeah, obviously, but. You know, we would run. I mean, we ran like what eight races, nine races at the Grove that year, but we were racing everywhere else too. So I mean, it just—I don't know. I felt a little bit of pressure, but I mean, it was just nice to win the championship and you know get out of there with eight wins. I think that year. So, but yeah, I mean, every time you get in the car, you know, being the car owner, you kind of feel pressure not to destroy sure. stuff. And, you know, all my guys are helping in the shop all week and getting stuff ready, and you want to go out there and win races for them. And for sure, I mean, that year, that was the same year Lance went, and it was kind of funny, almost every week, it was like, Lance would go win the 410 show, and you would follow him up and win the 58 show, and you was, it was like, it was kind of cool to see, because you guys would run, this may be just me, but it's just like, you all run the same line, enter three, like, we sit right past the bridge, your entry would be just like Lance's, and like, they're doing the same damn thing, and they're just hooking the bottom and driving away from everybody, this is awesome to watch, like, it was really cool as a fan to watch you do that. Obviously, knowing how good Lance Luis is and everything like that, but seeing like you do that, like I didn't know much about you then. That was awesome to see. Just every week, just so predictable. Oh yeah, I mean, watch we'd watch Lance there for you know those couple of years there, and still, I mean, they're the best car at Williams Grove consistently. Anyway, I mean, in the dry and in the wet, so you know, I mean, you we always watch the 410 feature and you know just see what they're doing and. You know, you just got to go out there and do what your car wants you to do, though. Sometimes, sometimes right. you just can't do what they do. For sure. And Jimmy, what you got? Yeah, we got a couple of uh, fan questions here uh, from some viewers right now. Uh, Sean Donnelly said, ask, uh, asked Eric, what is behind him? Is that a model track? Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's Dad's. He likes to haze, and he has some guys over during the winter. Yeah, sorry, I'm messing up my phone here, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a model track, and we got pictures everywhere. And you know, this is the bedroom downstairs. It actually used to be my bedroom back when I was, you know, when I lived here <laughs> when I was a kid. But uh, yeah, it's set up. He has racks everywhere of cars. Oh wow! Stuff. I don't know. Oh, that's fantastic. That's awesome. See him, but yeah, yeah. The, the first this, question I had one, was like, about the track yeah, in the, the background. Shop. Yeah. <laughs> um. And, uh, he's, the kids have we have a question from Chalk Guy from. Nah, um, we have a question from Chalk Guy here from Lincoln, and it was going to be kind of a question too that I had piggybacking yeah. off your 410 stuff before. It would be awesome to see you <laughs> run at at least one at Lincoln, says Chalk Guy. Uh, you said about 10 races or so for the 410s. Are there any that you have circled on the schedule that you definitely want to hit? Or I know you said maybe it would be poured if, it, if you know, if, what Grove got rained out or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it'll probably be a more before roll schedule just because it's just easier for us to run Saturday nights. You know, if we run Friday to Grove, like I said, if it gets rained out, we'll probably probably do the dream race and stuff like that last year. And, you know, it just it pays good, you know, and you get two shots at the track to get better. And I need all the experience I can get. So that kind of stuff. But, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'll put out a schedule here eventually, you know, for the 410 stuff. But, uh yeah, I mean, if Lincoln had like a big 358 race or something like the Grove and Baps does, you know, we'd probably get out and run it. But I think I don't really think they have any big races there this year or anything. I think they're all just 1,200 to win races. So who knows? It's pretty, pretty standard stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. We're talking about tires and, and you know, Matt actually had an enjoying the new tire talk. You have a track like you have on Sunday and, and you know, around here we could – you know, flip a coin, what you get, right? Heavy with a curb. It's by the time the 358th yeah. race, you, you don't know what you're going to get. What experience over the years has helped you with a race like Sunday night to, it can be fairly technical. It might look slow and easy maybe to some, but I imagine it's not. You got to hit your marks. You got to stay on it. You can screw up entry and blow a corner pretty easily, I would assume. Or was it easy? I, I don't know. Like, But what taught you to manage your tire and also be fast in those kind of conditions? Losing them a little bit. Might have lost you, bud. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, we got you. yeah, now we got you. 
There you go. Yeah, I think you just said about dry slick tracks. The rubber. I mean. It keeps cutting out a little bit for him. Wait, you hear me, uh, guys? Derek, sometimes. Oh, there we go. We got you a little bit. If uh, if it keeps up, may just have you uh, step out, step back in. We'll, we'll finish up with you. <clears throat> Might have been losing some service there. Um. Yeah. So, like that, that always made me wonder a little bit. You know, like he he's not a guy who races. You know, fifty, sixty times a year, like we were talking about. You know, he has some experience. He's been in the full size cars for a while. But I would imagine a track like that. Like I said, it probably it looked pretty easy watching him race. It, it, he made it look very easy, but I, I just wonder when you're out front like that, is it easy to lose your focus? Is it easy to miss your marks, or 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 was it easy? Was it a Sunday drive a little bit, you know? And I, I'm sure it's not, but and where do you learn that skill? Like where do you just someday it just clicks, or is that an evolution? You know, I, I I've always been curious about that. Yeah. Cause it's different, right? So you think dirt, we think elbows up, we think, you know, put, put it on the dash and, you know, put them on the dash and go where that was not that, you know? No. So it's a, it's a technique that is it just an evolution learned or used light bulb one day, you know? We had a couple of good other couple questions here. Hopefully Derek can get back in here uh, so we could finish up, but if not, thank him for uh, joining us to, so, yeah, awesome, awesome insight. Um, I learned a fair amount about Eric there and kind of the thought process one of those. Kind of cool. Yeah, so I, I wanted I asked him that question about um Colton and the track at, at Battle on Sunday asking four ten drivers about shortening the feature and they all thought it was gonna be okay. And they were gonna shorten it to like twenty five, I think. Right. And it turns yeah. out, um, in that article the statistics showed like I think Jeremy said four or five guys blew a tire on lap twenty five. So like that would have been perfect. Um, hey, welcome back. You got us now. Now I'm back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> restarted. All good. It happens. Right. Um, yeah, so I was kind of asking there about uh, sort of where you did it. Just did a light bulb go off one day and how to drive this dry slick, or did it just an evolution over time? I think we lost him again. <laughs> Bars uh, you you learn it over time. Oh, there you go. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Props, we'll, though. Props is. So, yeah. He made it so far. Yeah. We, this was, hey, this was better than our last couple of weeks. So, yeah. we have 20 minutes or so there. Um, thanks for Derek stopping by. Um, yeah. We, we'd like having winners on here. Uh, I yep. said that as a joke on my Facebook page, but um, I ran, I talked to a bunch of people in the pits on Sunday at BAPS and said, hey, if you're winning, you're coming on the show Monday. And they were like, He's Let's back. Hold on. Let's try it one more time. He's back. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> you got us? Come out in the shop. Maybe I got better service out here. They're okay. <laughs> we can hear it better. Yeah, we can hear you better. And sometimes even turning your camera okay. off might help too. Might just be able to do audio. It, it would it yeah. sometimes helps with bandwidth. It looks like it's working better though. Yeah, we'll try this. All right, cool. Okay. Um okay. <laughs> Yeah, we got you. Yeah, much better, much better. <laughs> All right, so um, go, ahead. go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, go ahead. So a couple fan questions. And we'll yeah, get a couple more uh, from Tyler. Uh, does Derek's go-kart experience help out on a track like BAPS on Sunday? Or not at all? I mean, that definitely helps on uh, the track. But uh, can you hear me still? Yeah, it cut out a little bit, but we got you. It's on the move again. We're gonna find. We're gonna find it. <laughs> Gotta find the sweet spot. But yeah, definitely. I think that's <laughs> normal. All right, bedroom spots. <laughs> oh, oh, we're traveling, traveling with Derek traveling. Lock, boys. Yeah, we're getting the whole hey. tour right now. This, is, this, this guy's all effort, baby. I love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Most race shops I've been in are like nuclear silos. You can't oh, yeah, get in, in or out. <laughs> Kyle Keen, that's for you, buddy. Got no signal in that uh, shot. We All right. 
All right. So my question for him, and maybe I'll ask him this uh, privately, because I, 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 I want to know what his goals are. Does he want to be a 410 driver full time? Like, what what is what goals, aspirations? What's he want to do? Obviously, his family. He's, two beautiful kids were in Victory Lane last night. They were thrilled to be there. Uh, the boy stood there beside him. <laughs> while he's interviewing. It was the funniest thing ever. And his daughter was just like standing there, smiling ear to ear. It was awesome. He's definitely a family guy for sure. Um, and, and the family's been in the sport forever. They're, the locks are good for Central PA Racing for sure. So um, congratulations, though. Um, uh, Macri won the race Sunday. Um, yep. He had okay tire left. Um, you know, and I don't know. Go ahead, Jimmy. Was he one of the few that were on the new tire, I believe? I believe so. So um, he was. I think most of the people that were blowing up had the old tire on, but I'm not saying it was exclusively the old tire. No, I, 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 think, I don't think it really mattered, but it may not have. I'm sure there were some new tires that were gone. So, yeah. Um, you know, I noticed, you know, and I don't know if it helped or I'm an idiot. I don't know anything, but he ran the cushion like the first half of that feature. He was on the wall. There wasn't rubber up there. Um, and I'm feeling like maybe that didn't wear out his tires. And then he did move down, but like early in that race, he was not down there. So it may have helped him with some tire wear. And he was able to run Danny down and pass him running the top. And as soon as he passed him, he kind of moved down. So, yeah, yeah. um, and his car was hooked up. He did a great job. Like, you know, I can't do that. Kyle Moody had a great night. Um, he stayed up front all night. I, you know, I think he was running out of tire at the end. He didn't have anything for, for Anthony for sure. Um, but we got Derek back, we got Derek back and it looks much better this time. So all right, let's get it. Let's bring him in. Derek. Thank you. Okay, for, thank you for the effort. All right. <laughs> hey, so real quick. I want to know goals. Do you want to be a 410 driver? Is that the plan for the team at this point? You want to be a full 10, full time 410 guy at some point? Um, the full time. I mean, or let's yeah, say 30 yeah. to 50 races a year around here. Yeah. 30 races a year. Yeah. That'd be more suitable for us. I mean, running a full time 410 deal is extremely expensive and, you know, I got two little kids at home and we like to go away and play on weekends every once in a while. So yeah, I mean, I'd like to do that, you know, 30, 35 times a year. I mean, to run with those guys that run full time and have full time crew chiefs and run a hundred races a year. I mean, you gotta be really on your game. So, you know, we can pick and choose and go to tracks that, you know, we know we can compete at and stuff, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I, but like I said, I like running the 358 and 360 deal, but, uh, you know, 410 deal, I mean, that's, you, you want to run with the best. So, I mean, that's definitely a goal. Um, so my question, I ask every driver, have you watched any of our shows, by the way, yet? Have you caught any of these? Yeah, I, I've, I've seen them on Facebook uh, when you had them on streaming on Facebook. And I watched a couple of them. You were streaming said, right now, buddy. Yeah, when you when you said you wanted to, you know, come on and do it, I was like, I better watch one or two to get <laughs> <laughs> see what see what these goofballs are up to, right? So yeah, do some research. <laughs> yeah, we I think we try to we try to keep it pretty uh, pretty tame and inviting for for guys to come on here, and we want really the, our goal is that people get to know you and not just you know you were even checker flag in Victor Lane, which is awesome, but they don't know Derek Locke from anybody else if they've never gotten any interaction. So um, you have to name me two drivers. And one, somebody you love racing around. You have a great time um, for whatever reason. Uh, it could be a very, any reason, whatever. It doesn't even have to be a reason. You just tell me the driver. The other one is somebody you is a thorn in your side. Somebody that's hard to race around. Not a personal attack here, okay? It's not a, not a personal thing. Uh, it can be. I don't, we'll take that too. But <laughs> somebody who is difficult just to race around. You have a hard time passing them. They're, they, they're aggressive to pass you. One they of will leave you alone. <laughs> like, oh man, uh, I mean, with the three hundred and sixty and the uh, Mark Smith would probably be, you know, the one that comes to mind. With I like racing with him. I mean, but he races you really hard, and he races you clean though. I mean, you know, he, I mean, he, he built my cars for a couple of years, and actually, he built my go kart engines back in the day when I ran go kart. Wow. So you know, and he ran Silver Springs with Dad and stuff. So you know, I kind of grew up watching him race, and you know, he's one that races you hard. I mean, any of the 410 guys that are, you know, racing for a living, I mean, they're going to race you fair, but they're going to race you really, really hard. So, I mean, 358 guys like running against uh, Steve Owings and stuff. He's fun to race against. And, you know, most of the guys, I mean, everybody's pretty respectful. I mean, we all kind of run our own equipment with that deal and nobody really wants to tear stuff up. And normally in that division, if when you tear stuff up, it's just new guys making mistakes and, you know, that happens. So, but yeah, every, pretty much every 410 guy, I mean, they're going to run you really hard. So, uh. But it's fun because you know, 
most of the time they'll push you really hard, but most of the time they'll give you just enough room to escape. Hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's interesting. You mentioned Steve Owings there and last night he was, he was tracking you down a little bit mid feature. Um, You were obviously, as you told us, you were safe and tire, but that have been fun. It was gonna be a fun battle to watch uh, as he, he closed in. Um, So that's interesting. That's the guy you like racing around. Cause I mean, he's obviously a veteran and very good. So um, I guess in Jeremy's passing off to me though. Yeah. So, so my question, since you're, you've won a lot, but if you had to pick one sprint car race, any sprint car race that uh, you could win or would want to win, what would that race be? Uh, I mean, probably like the Kramer Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Elon's great. I think we finished second three times in a row the last three times or <laughs> something with that deal. And, you know, uh, Kramer built dad's cars, you know, back in the day for super sportsmen and stuff. We actually have one downstairs, one of his uh, championship cars, I think, from 85 that Kramer built. So. Yeah, it comes with a cool pink trophy and stuff. So That's awesome. Definitely want to win that more because I've just been second so many times. <laughs> right. So. No, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Want to win that race. I think that's the first time we got Kramer Cup. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, I mean, a really love it. group of first, Mark Smith, Steve Owings, and Kramer Cup. So I, yeah, I like right. it. That's a I think good, it's cool. Good diversity. I, it, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, what else I you got? You were talking before. I just wanted my two cents because I closest track for me is pretty much Sealands Grove other than Bloomsburg. And I missed the days every Saturday night. It was 360s. You had URC or you had the Patriot Series, I, I think, in here all the time. I missed those days. I do have one question for you. I'm sure you've never been asked this before, um, but you said you're a UPS driver. Are you, guys, are you the first one done every day? You the fastest uh, driver. I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't race the truck. No, oh, you know, no, no, Jared. Yeah, All right. right. <laughs> yeah, I don't race the truck. Good. I'm actually a pretty not slow, slow driver, but you know, don't take. You're safe. My time any tickets. Or anything. He saves the speed for the race track. Make it. Make it yeah. to the races. <laughs> All right, before we lose you, shout out some sponsors. Who helped you out with the car uh, team sponsors? We'll get you out of here, buddy. Son of a bitch. I want to thank Bellinger's Auto Body. At, no, uh, I'm not going to do it. I don't know them. Um, we'll see we will share them. We'll share them. Yeah, we'll share we'll them on the back and out. We will get the sponsors He's not a quitter. He's coming back. He's not a quitter. Yeah, you know he's going to pop back in. Get those, get those sponsors, sponsors out. There. I, I I appreciate the effort. Telling your other body for sure is one. Yep. I should have. I can get my shirt out. He had a hat on. What's the hat? Uh, that's one of his sponsors for sure. Oh, I don't remember. Okay, uh, Either way. Either way. So, he's trying so, to get back here in the meantime. <clears throat> anything else from BAPS that you guys noticed that you guys had any takeaways? Uh, I, no, they just really. got a race in in March. They didn't get yep. to July this year. Rain out, yeah. They had their first race yeah. in July. They had a four ten show in March. So shout out to Babs. I mean, sometimes it falls that way, and it wasn't obviously what they wanted, but you can't fault them. Um, it's not sitting here, Eiler. Good in life. Oh, we um, should. Uh, Mad Matt here was asking here what happened to Justin Peck. That was something interesting that happened. They called him for a spin. Right. Um, Apparently and he didn't that he didn't spin. spin. He got sideways, but they said he did and a 360 then, and sent him to the back. And he in the end he, he, drove, he drove like, like a bat out of hell <laughs> for a him. long time. And then he ended up getting a flat tire, and such. So yeah, it was uh, a wild wild race. I think nine cars finished. Just unfortunate, think, you know. They tried, and the track was racy for the heat races, but you know, just you, daytime you surface that sprint car limit article. I think they had an idea. And sometimes when you have an idea, it's wrong. Um, I think that's kind of what they found out. I don't, I don't fault them. I think it's just like Lincoln. They they went for something, and the result wasn't what anyone wanted. But in the day, it was still a race. They still we had a great time. I had a great time. Yeah. Um, the tire thing is unfortunate. That's just all there is to it. That's that's all there has to be at this point. Damn right, Braden. You keep finishing third, buddy. Hey. Um... Uh, so shout out Chase Deets, by the way, winner at Lincoln yes. Speedway, uh, third race, third race, third or fourth, second, yeah. new car, new team, third second or third. He didn't run the outlaws. Yeah. He didn't he run that one, spun out. I think it was second or third race. So Chase Deets won that thing. Uh, and I'm going to shout out Zane Rudisil. He had a hell of a race. Um, 
So uh, real quick, I'm going to take a detour. We'll come back. Derek Lock sponsors Dellinger's Auto Body, Russ's Auto Trailer, and uh, Russ's Auto and Trailer Sales, Dryden RS Mechanical Services. That's what was on his hat. Uh, JMB Liquidators, Ritter's Transport, McGowan Diesel Performance, and Wadlinger's Glass. Right. Thank you for supporting so, Derek and that yeah. team. Uh, supporting, better, better. supporting sprint car racing. We are better yeah. that they are on the track. So yeah. thank you for supporting those support guys. Support you guys. Sure. Support racing. Thank you, Derek Locke, for joining the show and putting yeah. your effort in. Appreciate the story. We'll awesome. try to get them back again. We're we'll gonna have try them to do back some post race stuff with them. You know, yeah, we're trying to we're... do some stuff at the track a little bit more too. So Derek Locke yeah. will be back because he's gonna keep winning, and we like winners. Uh, but thanks for Derek Locke coming in. And yes. Quite Braden is not a guest in the episode on this show. Braden has not been. He's not a winner. <clears throat> so and Tyler is no Tyler Shell. That's true. That's very true. Um, I think Smeal has more wins damn, than Eiler at this point. Damn. Man. Anyway. Um, <laughs> What else we got here? Outlaw. Uh, what of Outlaws? They they went on their Southern tour, Talladega yeah. Short Track and Magnolia. Got both races in. Um, all of them were really good. Both good really races. Good. Yeah. Um, Talladega Short Track is their first time back there in like twelve years. I think they yeah. put a wall up in one and two, which ended up. I don't know if that was. <laughs> if that was, they had some problems. We'll get in one and two wide enough, but I love tracks. I love tracks with no walls, and that's what three and four there had. You had guys going over and made it real tricky, and the track was wide right away up there. Um, it was it was decent racing. It wasn't bad. Um, Brad, Buddy Kofoid won that one. Brad Sweet in second. Right. Um, and then Magnolia on Saturday night, I was watching that a little bit alongside with Lincoln, and that was a really great race. That was uh, probably the most exciting race of the weekend, I would say. Brad Sweet held off David Gravel, who was charging through, but that track was nice and wide. Um, lots of lap traffic getting involved. You had the top five underneath a blanket at one point with Shots and Macedo and I think Cotton Shield. Um, that was a really great race. So good to see the Outlaws go somewhere down south and get a race in because usually they're getting like one or two, one out of two rained out. And they oh, had good crowds. 80, good crowds. It was like 80 degrees both days. And now they head on over to Texas. Um, I mean, I know we watched Friday night. We both watched the stream. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of cool seeing them go to a place they haven't been to in just over a decade. And you saw the, the fan base clearly. They don't have sprint cars yeah. down there the way uh, that we're used to. So you see a lot, of, a lot of NASCAR <laughs> stuff, but that's that's really cool to see. They were still yeah. packed. You still had a lot of fans there that maybe were new to sprint car and stuff of that. Um, and I didn't get to watch Saturday, but I mean, Brad Sweet. The rebounded pretty he's turned it around really quick after that Florida swing. I saw the stat right before we got on here. Two point six average finish in the last like six races, something like that, four races. Mm -hmm. Um big cats on the prowl. David Grab get running. Don't call it a comeback. He didn't go <laughs> yeah. anywhere, right? Yeah. I didn't say I a think, comeback. I said he's prowling. I think David Grabber run. Not to discount Macedo because Macedo's right there in the points. And even Logan shuhart has been very good. And Buddy, I mean if Buddy but he's fourth in points right now. If he he races the entire, just... He's going to be right there. Um, I think him and Gio are like the future of that series, you know, five, six, seven years from now. But I think this is the year where we really see Brad take on David Gravel. I think Gravel's right there. He has so much speed that Gravel's been able to get a little bit better at digging himself out of holes, it seems like, compared to like if he was mired in the back, uh, he kind of didn't move up as much. He charged nine positions i think on set on on uh saturday night and probably if he had one or two more laps or didn't have a late caution he probably had sweet um but i think i'm really excited to see them two battle it out the rest of the year i think it is going to be between them with with uh you know a dash here as sheldon a dash here of Macedo, a little bit of donnie a little bit of logan um you know there's a lot of parody in the world of outlaw series right now but i a think little those bit of two guys are the cream of the crop of, yeah. of course the posse yeah. i think i think the right word is parody a little bit i mean you're you know even the years that sweet has won this it's not those years like donnie it was wrapped up and you know with 12 races to go it's kind of come down to it a, a few of these years and i think it's going to continue to do that as these guys get more maturity and more experience gravels mosquitoes now gravels got experience but mosquito sheldon if he can start putting it together right like they go on runs we saw sheldon go on runs good and bad Mm -hmm. He starts picking up the bad ones and 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 taking some wins and and finishing them or going second. I know that's crazy. <laughs> Put it together like <clears throat> you're seeing Macedo with a little bit of that, like putting a whole night together and gravel, figuring out a whole night. 
you continue to have that, it's going to be a battle all season and I'm here for it. That's pretty exciting. Yep. Um, you know, I think it's going to, it's, it's a long season. Don't know what'll happen. You talked about the future six, seven years from now. There's some guys that aren't even in the series. I think we'll be making noise in the series by then. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, Ryan Timms, I don't know what his, Sorry. all right, Siri. Um, <laughs> Like Ryan Tim, I don't know what his future holds, but that's a guy I'm looking at. Um, you know, Justin Peck, I don't know what that future holds for that team. I mean, we know what they're doing this year. Um, yeah. You know, Tyler Courtney. Um, that is some I, news today from Justin Peck that he's not running All Stars full time. He's and, they're going true outlaw uh, with the mindset building, of building the goal outlaws full right. time. Eventually, and, and I think with that, I think we, we had Brent on the show a few weeks ago, and I think in the end, I think his goal in some ways. To, Go full like full outlaw tour. I guess I um, to get in a position to do that without it, you know, sticking your whole operation. Uh, so like a Brent Marks and Anthony Macri, you'd expect <clears> at <throat> some point to at least investigate going back or at least getting out on the tour. Like he's got the the wheels. Like so, I think you're right. I think the future is interesting and bright for the outlaw tour. <laughs> like guys aren't even there yet that are you can kind of see building to that. Mm-hmm. I, even as we talk about it, I almost like back that statement, like go back on my own statement a little bit because you're seeing guys trying to make cases for not doing it, like, and doing the true outlaw thing and saying, well, I don't need to be an outlaw. I can go do a true outlaw, make the same amount of money and not be tied to a series. So while I say that, what that looks like in six to seven years, nobody knows, but the potential is there for a lot of good good talent. And I think the reason why I I don't go, like it's not a bad thing is Brent said it. They take the West Coast swing out and some of the stuff. The end goal for most sprint car drivers, I think, is to be a World of Outlaws champion. Like if you're trying to be a professional sprint car driver, that's the top. That's the top of the mountain. As much uh, shit as we talk about the outlaws, even even if pinnacle. you you're running a business and maybe the Outlaw Tour is not best for business, and you look at like Justin Peck and the news that came out with Sprint Car Unlimited dot com today, talking about that. Um, that's to build to an Outlaw program. So it's it's the same thing, and mm-hmm. I think there's there's not many guys that are full time race car drivers that aren't like, hey, if I could, I'd want to go um, run full time outlaw. Yeah, they want to race against the best, and that's the the right. best group of talent in one given spot, any given night, right? So, you know, I think you're seeing Brent do a true outlaw schedule. He's not tied to the tour, but he's going to go race with them 40 times this year, potentially, or 30 times a right. year with the Outlaw Tour against those guys because he does want to race against the best, but it also has to be the right decision for the team. Right. Um, and that's up to each team, and every team's in a different spot. It's not – you know, you can't just say this works for everybody. It, it doesn't, right. you know, based on personnel and equipment and funding and travel. So um, I, I don't know what it looks like in five to six years, but the sport is healthy right. with young talent um, from for sure. all over the country. You know, I'm not – just going to have posse blunders on here because I don't know how many of our local guys are, are prepared to potentially go race the outlaws someday. And they may not even want to, right. So right. you can knock on, you know, back in the day when like Fred Raymer, Oh, the porch, the porch. Well, he didn't want to or have to, he had th- triplets. Like, we'll see you guys. Right. I'll see you in, I'll see you in October. <laughs> I'm gonna be gone for the year. Right. Like, and that's, like, that's the, thing up, about right? the rest of the country has to kind of grow up a little, and it's always going to get shit on for that a little bit. And they still do. We still mm-hmm. do. But, when you have an area that can you pay can out the way 50, they do 50, here, 70 times you can make a living and run a business and make a living in racing. Do both here? Why would you? Yeah, like it. Ultimately, life matters more than and going maybe, racing with the outlaws. If you can make maybe, it all work in your life, great. Maybe a little experiment we do: figure out how many local Central PA races within maybe five hours our guys could run. That pay more than the All Stars or equal to All Star and Outlaw races if they were on the tour, because I think it's a it's a a decent percentage if you stayed here between that no, eight to I, twelve thousand range. I think you get into once we get the season going a little bit. There's a lot of them, right? That's and what I'm saying. Overall, you have to if you're going to do it around here, like sort of Brent last year, he take last year. I, I don't even want to say take yeah, like last year's anomaly. He won the historical big one in the Kings Royal. And but last like year overall, he won the national open, but mm-hmm. even Danny or Macri, Macri did made good money last year. It was the winningest and he ran mainly local 
He right. made great money last year. I think you have to run more races to equal all the all-star and outlaw money because there's minimum of what's the minimum for out, an all outlaw race? 10 grand now. Right. I think so. So but that's a pretty good race around it. here. But you have to win it. I, I get that. But around here, so you $3,000 payday, $3,500 payday at Lincoln, you got to win a lot of those. To, it's only 3,500 at Lincoln. I think it used to be three grand for a lot of years. I think it's only 3,500 or yes. four grand maybe. Like, so what Grove is five or fifty five now? Port's fifty five or five now. I mean, Lincoln weekly? advertises it's five grand to win, like it's special. So that's not their weekly winning number, to my knowledge. And I could be wrong. I don't want to. I don't want to say. No, I mean, to your point though, like as a person that's trying to do stuff, you know, locally, to do an outlaw schedule and be based in Central PA has its perks versus a guy like a Brian Brown trying to do it from Knoxville. Um, it's a, it's a hell of a drive anywhere we race, we from Missouri to anywhere. Yeah. And here you have three options, big options. Then you still have Sealand's Grove, Baths, Bloomsburg, Big Diamond, Path Valley. You, you even start places. going more west, Clinton County, right. you Bedford, it, you got Lernerville. Like Danny, Danny looks out to Ohio Speed Week. That's not even a, that far of a drive compared to what some of the Midwest guys have to do. No, not when you're going to go out there and run six or seven races. That's nothing. Right. And it's. No. I mean, it's perks. I think it's it's exciting. I think that's why you see the outlaws trying to make a, a spring run through here before May because the cars are here and the fans are here. So cash in. So yeah, that's all I got. It's so let's uh, let's take a little look here uh, before we get out of here. A uh, little look here at maybe a preview of this weekend, what it might look like, um, and then we'll do drag it and dump it. I'll be at Williams Grove, hell of high water. Is a preview of the weather forecast or the racing schedule? Yeah. Well, pretty much I'll be a little at Williams bit of both. Grove, hell of high water. Oh, you'll just be there, huh? Sitting yep. in the parking lot by yourself? Live there. Oh, he, he's going to happen this time. Next door, so. It's happening this time, boys. Jimmy's not coming. We're going to see Sprint Cars on the bridge. I don't know why you keep saying I'm not coming. If it's a I'm coming. going. Mother. No, that's not how this works. <laughs> You ruined the whole mojo. What's going on this weekend, Jimmy? What do we got Friday so night? So we got Williams Grove probably Friday. Um, what else was running there? Uh, you got the – is it 358s? Oh, no. Yeah. No. They're at Lincoln. No. They're at Lincoln. 358s at Lincoln. What's it to Grove Friday? Grove, I think. I feel like it's been is late it, models. Is it, it's not late models. It's not late models. They only had one try, and it was last week, and they got rained out again. Uh. I was going to say USAC East Coast, but I don't think that's Modified right. racing returns modified. Friday. 358 right. modified. I, back. I was We're right the first time. It's going to rain out. Just not the right car. Right, right. <laughs> I was right, just not the right cars. 358 modified. Uh, so, yeah, you got the 358 modified, so it's the modified stone. I do their first time back in to Williams Grove, and God knows. Um, that's if they race. It's it's looking 50-50 it like... shot. You know, it's going to be a chance. Should be fun. Friday and Saturday <laughs> looking, um, Facts. Are looking kind of iffy. It's Saturday looks worse. Saturday looks bad, but if they do race, Lincoln four tens and three fifty eight opener. Yeah. You got Ford as well. <coughs> I, think it's, I think it's just four tens and late models. You also got a three day weekend as Sean Dodley uh, also pointed out. I was going to get into this. Uh, Bridgeport's got a three-day weekend this week, and I think they raised something on Friday. I think they have USAC East Coast on Saturday, and then they got four tens on Sunday, Sunday afternoon race. Wait, Bridgeport's actually going to race something this year? <clears throat> they're, they're supposed they're to have three. They, 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 they've been trying. Uh, they had some unique excuses last week. Yeah. Very they unique. Kind of, yeah, they did. I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. talk about to, it. Uh, we'd I, have I really to ask know. Alex, but we don't know. We could ask Alex. Maybe we could bring him on one day to explain it. Maybe some random – Maybe next Friday when the growth cancels. The internet. Uh, let's just go with weather and other outside issues. Which was their official release. Which but Sunday, four tens. Lance DeWeese says he's going. Yeah. I mean, Bridgeport's well, been getting nope. a... Wait. They said that. But uh, the Lance DeWeese email I got did, in fact, say they're taking this weekend off. So that tells me they're not going well, to Well, looking at the weather, it doesn't surprise me sunday does look good but it depends on again sunday how much rain we get because looks like same a good thing day what happened with Bridgeport boys. last week where they had probably a, that one kind of nice day to race but track was gone you know it's just it's march man that's i think that kind of goes back to our topic before um 
Some just, would say it's March Madness. Yeah, it's just it's it's springtime, man. It's gonna be wet. We gotta be <laughs> we gotta be happy that with any racing we're getting between now and probably Memorial Day. And then once Memorial Day happens, it's on. You know, wow. that's that's kind of my take on Memorial it. Day. That's a, it's like, it's yeah, a hot take. That's like the the beginning of summer. It's like the kick off of summer. Usually I've spring seen, is iffy, summer I'm not even is, arguing. I've, been, I've seen five races. It's March 27th. It's not that bad. No, I'm a happy not. clam. Not at all. I'm just mad that they haven't been at Winners Grove yet because I mean, it, I mean, it sucks when they all get rained out for sure when you're like excited to go, but I've been to five races this year. Yeah. And one of them is an travel. outlaw race. We've been and to one outlaw race already this year. Right. <laughs> that never oh. happens. It's not so, that yeah. bad. I it's promise you. It's been great. It's been great. It's been a great year so far. Yeah. I mean, shit happens. Weather happens. You can't the control the weather. Been around here still. We can control. We can complain about a lot of things and nitpick and whatever about all the things, but mm-hmm. it's been a great year so far. We've seen so some good racing. Shout out Chase Deeds. And... Drink it and dump it. Yeah. Let's do it. Um I got a lot of drink it, so I got very little dump it. So I don't know if you guys want to go first and I'll clean up any that maybe you guys did don't also overlap. Nope. Not doing it. Not nope. tonight, Chris. Yeah, no, no NASCAR. You don't want us doing this. We've had our own private discussions and none of us agree we on it. We fought four days straight. We will no, be here. Well, I wouldn't say we fought. We just none, none of us could come to an agreement. We've nitpicked on it. for four days straight. About everything about NASCAR. I'm not doing it tonight. I don't you have don't. the energy. I can't. <laughs> That's a special it. show. Maybe another week, buddy. I don't have the energy or, or the patience. Suarez, the- Suarez should get a suspension. That's all I'm going to say on it. We won't be get friends. Suspension. Suspension. If, if we got into it, we wouldn't be friends anymore and the podcast would end. <laughs> Well, no, right. it's not that bad. So uh, I'll do. I'll go first here. Drink it. Uh, Zane Rudisil. Um, he had a great weekend. Uh, he was probably a little better than Chase uh, in that race. His car was more free than everyone else. He could get the car in, or he could rotate and drive off. Just he passed him twice during that race, and it didn't count. Um, he had thirty nine opportunities with restarts and things, but just couldn't quite seal the deal there. But that's a great run for him. Um, they made. Struggled a little bit early Sunday, made some progress, got through, you know, got better each time they hit the track. So for a young guy with not tons of experience, um, shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Chase Deets, um, great run. Yeah. Kyle Reinhardt on Sunday at BAPS came through the field, survived yeah. uh, with top five run there. So um, shout out to them. I got kind of get to know them through Rich and Addicted to Dirt. Um, he does PR for those guys. So um, Kyle Keen got out for the first time in 358. Brought home sixth. My buddy Brett Strickler got a fifth. Um, they had tires at the end, barely, but they made it. Um, survived. The cars rolled in the trailer. Not a bad deal there. So uh, a lot of drink. It's the same, same kind of deal. Uh, dump it would be um, Aaron Bollinger for sure. Uh, looking for driving opportunities. If you anybody's got a car, yeah, put, yeah. put him in it. Um, his car is destroyed, like bad. Uh, I finally saw the replay of that today, and I didn't realize I heard it. I was in turn one and two when it happened. It was in three and four, his accident. And um, I saw the replay video today, and I was like, holy shit, that was big. And as fast as that place was, we're just thankful he's not banged up. Um, so dump it to him. Um, that's, that's where I'm at. That's what I got. Chris, what you got? Well, Jeremy took all 18 of mine. Yeah, so it was great. he took a couple of mine, too. I was going to do it with like Kyle Keen and, you know, get the car clean, get the car out there. Um I guess a little bit of a dump. It was the heat thing with him, but uh, it, Brett Strickler was my actual drink. Oh, yeah. That was drove. Oh, shit. Yeah. I, video got, he, got, he, got uh, he got jobbed. He got jobbed. He got jobbed. He got jobbed. But my actual drink, it was Brett Strickler. You know, he passed a lot of cars to finish fifth, and he was driving the piss out of that car. Um, and I appreciated that. He drove yeah. him and Chris Frank had a hell of a battle for a lot of laps of that feature. Um, they banged wheels, smoke, thought they both were going to crash. They came out on the good side of it. So that was really cool. Drink it up. Great for Brett to get out in the car again. I know he's been itching. Um, great for Kyle, obviously. Yeah. You talked about Chris cool Frank, guy. though, um, and I have photos of it. I missed it live, but Wyatt Hinkle and Chris Frank were like a few feet from each other for a while. It could have been big. They don't like each other, but it didn't. They both made it. We're okay. They, well, did Hinkle? He did end the race on the hook, but I think it was that's a check. Yeah, he it looked it after the checker. He blew tire went out. Right he, he, tire, yeah, it, the tire yeah, went out. Brett, and four, he lost two spots right there. Yeah, he the lost third 
or I guess fourth and fifth because yeah. uh, Chris and Brett got past them. Yeah. So yeah. big time there. Uh, dump it. Just the bad luck of the the track the way, both for Lincoln and Baths. You know, it's they both got the raw deal for the opposite reasons. Um, Lincoln put an effort in. Tracks not bad, just a lot of carnage. Um, Baths put a lot of effort in and just throw, wind and sun towards the track. They what are you gonna do? Yeah, um, and uh, Aunt Bay, by the way, that comment there. Your boy should have been penalized with Kyle if Kyle got penalized because they went together early. Nobody had an advantage on that start. I know the la- you're 100 percent right. Um, it definitely like your guy was good, uh, but they both went early. But they both went together on that. Nobody had a clear advantage off the corner, um, and that's probably the part that upset me. Did they go earlier than the line? Yeah, but they yeah. went earlier than the line. Yeah, so, they all went together. Um, if they're gonna. Uh, to me, that's a no call, in my opinion, just because it was not a clear advantage whether they went well, or not. Kyle did have a pretty good lead going into turn one, but it's just because I think he had the better the line to start on. Bingo. But they all fired off at the same time. That's correct. So, it wasn't like Kyle was half a straightaway ahead of the field. Right. You know, he's right. the leader. He should be in front. The first start, and I'll tell you this, the first start, the double zero beat him to the chalk line by about three feet. But, and also the double zero, he's smart. The double zero was up in the in the grip off the corner and actually turned under Kyle at the start finish line to almost be under him into one. So like that, and he didn't do anything wrong, but like there was a clear advantage of being on the top there and being up in the grip to come off down off the hill into the into that. So um there really wasn't a so Kyle knew that after going into that second restart and wanted to make sure he got into one with a clear track. I don't blame him at all, but it didn't, it's not like he took off and the field didn't go. So I don't know. I, he got hurt a little bit, in my opinion. And to go back, right kind of, you said it there. Uh, Christopher Noel there with talking about Chad Trout and his damage with the the kind of stack up in the four ten feature it was the same kind of thing. I think it was Freddie or Billy went from the top to the bottom and had a big grip, and it caused a big stack up going into one. Um, he slid Troy, into it. It was some cosmetic stuff. Right? It didn't look too right. bad. I think they saw a rundown of the parts list today. Right. Some stuff, wing, but, wing bed, every, Troy. Yeah. Troy got upside down. Tyler yeah. Ross got turned around. It was just like an accordion effect, and it could have been a lot bigger. And, and yeah, I mean, thankfully it was. Hopefully, not too bad for all those guys, but definitely wing and some tail tank stuff from what I saw. Yeah, I got a picture of car, Troy's car like completely vertical. I didn't post it yet to make fun of him. I didn't. I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so I'll yeah. save that one for another day this week. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> um. Yeah, my drinks and puppets are all pretty much similar to you guys. Definitely, I'm going to echo again Kyle and Brett Strickler. Um, Kyle Keen and Brett Strickler, they both were uh, really impressive. They had really, really good runs. You know, even with Kyle getting uh, his penalty in the heat race, he fell back then on the on the ensuing restart, battled back to fourth, got himself in the redraw. Uh, that's what, you know, that's what you got to do. Sometimes shit doesn't go your way, but you got to battle through it, and Kyle definitely did that, and Came out with a good good finish in the feature because of it. And uh, Brett was – he was an animal from hot laps, man. He yeah. passed like five cars in hot laps. He was just – he was out there. He might have been the fastest car all day. Um, and then the track went to what it was. So um, definitely those two guys. Um, Derek Locke, awesome watching him just kind of – Fend off charges from Logan, Logan Rumsey, from uh, even Kyle Spence and um, Steve Owings. So, and it's still able to save tire. Definitely well deserved win. I think you're going to see a lot. Obviously, we've seen it, you know, three straight weeks of titles and everything. That but point, it's at this point, it's Derek Locke doing Derek Locke things. When he was yeah. out the, Derek, Rumsey was there, but he's just smooth, steady, doing Derek Locke things that I've seen him do at Williams Grove and stuff. And it's maybe time to give him that little bit of respect. Like we talk about doing Lance Luis things, well, maybe it's he's doing Derek Locke things. Yep. Like, I'm also going to drink it to Lincoln. They got they got a race in. I don't care how shitty the race track was. You still had 28 cars in the pits or 26 cars in the pits and a shit ton of uh, legends. legends. Um, the, only, the only reservation I had on that whole situation was I know that there wasn't a shit ton of fans here because it was miserable out. And if that gets used as an excuse for why Flo is killing attendance, I will no one has even out. said that until now. Oh. Wait, I know. Wait. I'm just saying if it does in the future, yeah. You know, we get to finally see this week if as long as they could get everything in a weekly show that's not on flow. 
um, and see how attendance is affected there. But I want to give a, a big shout out to them for getting the race in, staying with the track. And doing what everybody wants, you know, the, the it seems like, and dump it to the fans because it seems like no matter what these tracks do, you can't do nothing right. At the end of the day, you got to realize it's Mother Nature, man. I mean, it's just, there's only so much you can do. I understand, you know, we're all excited. We all want to go race. There are times, like, I was kind of a little, I was a little, sus, it was a little suspect with the outlaws at Williams Grove a couple weeks ago. Really thought they could have got that in, but other than that, I, I think everything's been pretty justifiable, um, you know. And yeah, that's I think that's really all I got. Um, shout out to the legends for showing up and paying Lincoln's bills for the week. Um, uh, you know that division, love it or hate it, they pay the bills uh, whenever they show up to a racetrack. So, shout out to those guys for being there and coming out and and supporting. Yeah, put on that's a right. good show too. Yeah. So we got we good. We're taking sponsors here. Keen Motorsports. Yes. Good to see. Thank you, Kyle. Kyle Thank you, Keen and Sean Motorsports. yesterday. So yeah. We'll see you guys there. And yeah. Fast, but yeah. We appreciate the support, man, all the way around. Um, you know, just good people. Um, Kyle's doing big things, and uh, he has some other some other things in in the works here for, you know, personal life and professionally, and and uh, you know wants to continue to grow his team a little bit. So. If you're a, you're a business out there looking for a good partner um, to put on a race car, uh, look up Kyle Keen and Keen Motorsports. They're they're a good. They're definitely um, smart group of people and people that will represent your company well. So, shout out to those sure, guys sure. for sure. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Hopefully, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is a little bit shorter show tonight. Uh, I'm a little bit under the weather myself, and uh, you know, one guest, and we'll keep things moving. We don't have a two and a half hour show because we're not going to talk NASCAR. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you all. See you next week.